Okay, so thanks for sticking with the channel and stuff. If you wanted to like and subscribe or, you know, maybe comment on this video and let me know that you found it, I think that will help us kind of, or us, me, <laughs> sorry, uh, try to get the channel back to its former state of, uh, you know, relative mediocrity. Well, I never noticed that there's a little scroll bar here. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about the Line 612. Now, I've got another video on this that I've done... Um, close to when it actually came out now obviously this is the newest amp on the helix but it's a bit of a departure in some ways from what line six have typically been doing now prior to this you know you had like a princeton added you've had the diesel stuff added um and a lot of what line six do is obviously based on real world amps you know real examples in their amp room and this is even why you get some kind of odd things going on, like some of the marshals don't have bright caps because the real examples of the amps that they've got, they've modelled those circuits and they've modelled what they got there. Some of these other amps in here, like the originals, are not so much based on real life stuff. So the Line 6 Pedonk, for example, is based on an older Line 6 Big Bottom model. The Line 6 Litigator is from the mind of Ben Adrian, he's trying to scratch that Dumble itch, you know, thinking about fender modded circuits such as two rock, dumble, that sort of thing, um, but not based on any one real amp. The line six fatality is based on a, a dual rectifier, but with the kind of tube screamer kind of thing in front. So that one's designed to kind of out of the box be able to do what a lot of metal guys do with an actual rectifier in real life and a tube screamer. Now and this is a modded 2204, I think it has extra mid controls. Line 6 Epic is their take on a Soldano, I think. Uh, Line 6 Doom, again, I think this is based on a Marshall into a different power amp. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. Line 6 Electric, this is a Bogner Uber, but a slightly, I think they said broken model or something like that. But it's from an earlier Bogner Uber model and they brought it back because people wanted it, I think. And the Line 6 Von 2 is based on this idea of an older kind of fendery slash orange or fender tweed slash orangish inspired circuit but brought into kind of the boutique world so not based on anything particularly um, when you pull it up you get this kind of thing <laughs> And for me, it's one of the most instantly gratifying um, amps in the Helix. Like th This was the very first time that I thought, okay, well, I don't... The video on this is going to be quite easy because basically I feel like you can just start playing it. And yeah, this might be, I think, what I would recommend for people that are maybe new to the Helix or haven't um, spent loads of time with it and maybe are kind of struggling with bits and pieces. Obviously, there's quite a steep learning curve with any modeler, um, but the Helix especially, um, you know, you, you, it takes time, I think, to, to maybe get what you want out of it. But this Vontu... <laughs> So, you know, it wasn't difficult, in, in my opinion, to get some things that I was digging. So, the 6.3 drive, this, we can have the amp be cleaner, obviously, if we take the drive down. And it does take us into quite driven territory as well, I think, if we go all the way up. It's sort of a very versatile amp, you know, I would say could pretty much do most genres, I think. Now, 
Now the high pass filter, this is like to add or remove bass, so naught. You're getting more of that kind of sludgy thing. And as you increase it, you're kind of tightening up and Now that's one reason that I think also that this might be a really good amp for folks that are on a gig situation and you need to make an alteration quite quickly. That to me is a really useful control because, you know, I was speaking to Ella earlier in the week and she was saying, you know, on a gig, I was finding things actually really boomy. So to have an amp where the control is there that very clearly... can start to remove that flub in quite a musical way, I think makes this a great candidate for that. We've got mid control as well. You know what mid control is gonna be. Subtle, usable, I think. So I would use that mid, co mid control personally. I would have the mids higher for lead tones and probably lower for rhythm tones. That mid spot as well though is just again super musical. <laughs> then we've got presence. So another thing that I like about this amp is that we do away with the kind of treble control so instead of having two things that we're worried about to control the higher end, we've just got this presence. And if I open it all the way up, you'll hear. It is very much, you know, about that kind of the sizzle stuff. Um, and what I'd suggest is maybe if you were going for a really screaming high gain tone, um, this sort of thing, maybe you would consider running that presence lower. Just really good. So the depth is the only other control that is. So this could be a thing that you balance with this high pass filter to kind of get the right bass response that you're looking for. So if you run this all the way up, depth is it. So this is like the thinnest. Get if you had a really bassy kind of uh, speaker system, but you can kind of bring it back in like power amp, the opposite of pe presence, like resonance, that sort of thing. Or run this all the way down for the most kind of bass. Like you can hear that's obviously a bit farty, but depending on what kind of system you're playing into, you might think, right, I need a bit more of this. So depth and high pass filter. So if you run the high pass filter at zero, that's the most bass. And the depth at 10, that's the most bass. Um, if you run the high pass filter at 10 and the depth at zero, that's the least kind of bass. So, and that's the Vontu really. You've got these other kind of generic settings and this is the cab that it pairs with it naturally, which again, I feel like is a, a really good pair. So I might just put together a, a little preset here. Oh, I don't think you necessarily need to do it for this because it sounds pretty good by default. I would still do this by best practice. 
just have it so that you've got your amp and cab separate unless you need the extra kind of slots for reverb or not reverb is not what I'm trying to say other effects and stuff just because it does mean that if you needed to change this preset up to work in a different scenario um, you know like say you had to send something out to a cab then you can actually make changes without losing your amp settings or you could change in for your IR Okay, right, so that's that. Then the drive goes up to maybe about 7.5 here, and we lose our delay. I'm gonna turn on trails for this, and up the headroom here. Here's a tip, just because, depending on how hot you hit the front of the transistor tape, you're gonna get a bit of kind of clipping. And then for our lead tone, and what I'm going to do is up the drive I'm going to take the presence down so press in and turn and I'm going to turn on the input gate so you can leave it on for the others except for the clean because I like to play my clean tones without a gate and we could even, I don't know, we got plenty of space left to use other stuff so maybe I could consider even a pretty chorus here between the delay and reverb for the clean tone and bypass it for the lead and let's see how this sounds now so I think a really easy and just a simple amp to use I mean, I just, <laughs> I think it's a great amp. So yeah, let me know if you want me to drop this preset into the folder. Um, just for your information, I'm gonna have to move the folders to another location in time. So I would suggest maybe if you've, you've got access to the folders and you're viewing this video, maybe if you know someone else who has access to them, tell them to download them uh, like now and then I'm going to move them at some point, so at some point those links will no longer really work for you. You will be able to get access back, I think, um, in time, because I'll put them somewhere else where you can get access to them, but you may have to be a bit patient with me, email me, that sort of thing. Thank you for stopping by, I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers!